I'm in the corner of Certain Rise, the up and comer in race three. Certain Rise, 100 metres to go is clear from Sue, baby. Super silly is from nowhere, but Certain Rise is going to be too good. Certain Rise, a nice filly. Via Sestina for me in the Cox Plate. But Via Sestina storms away with 150 to go. She's four, five lengths in front. It's going to be a Cox Plate round. And James McDonald, a century of the very best. Via Sestina by seven lengths. Hello everyone and welcome to my preview of Derby Day this week at Flemington. It's that time of the year again, it is Derby Day and some people describe it as Christmas Day for punters and I tend to agree because you, you never know what you're going to get on Derby Day and I'm just going to be happy with one winner on this card, it's that hard. Um, sports bet feed, if you want to be the 100th follower on the sports bet feed, go over to sports bet and follow me, the Seminator Dash YouTube, Wall of Fame versus Dean is going up but... Forgot to print out the picture. Let's get on to race number one. Race one to start the day is the Group 3 Carbine Club Stakes over the 1,600 metres for the three-year-olds. Feroce is the favourite at $2, ahead of Eliana at $4, 950 out to Stylish Secret, and then Long Rose the rest. We're going to take a look at Feroce's performance in the Caulfield Guineas last start, where it was oh so close um, to beating Private Life. Now, it had the track pattern in favour on this day. It flew up the inside, just peeled off Private Eyes back with about 200 metres to go um, Private Life not private eye, um, peeled off private life's back and just couldn't pick it up. I think Flemington is a really big plus for this horse. It looks like a big track horse with its galloping action. I would, wouldn't mind seeing it out to 2,000 metres, but it's also proven over 1,600 metres in the Caulfield Guineas that it can uh, run some good ratings. So I've got Feroce on top, looks to map well from gate five, ahead of Aliana, who won the Reg Allen last start up there in Sydney, which is what Fangirl won before winning the Carbine Club. So um, you can sort of compare those two horses there. James McDonald takes the ride. Chris Waller sends it south. It's got to be considered. Um, in there for third, I've got Canara. This horse also comes through the Reg Allen that Aliana won. Blake Shin takes the right, has to be respected. And King of Enterprise was actually my original on top selection at a bit of a price. I liked its most recent main win and its debut performance was solid. But I'm in the corner of Feroce to start the day, Derby Day. Race two is the vanity for the three-year-old fillies at group three level over the 1,400 metres. And welcome to Cup Week. We've got three equal favourites at $8.00. Um, they are Zaitung, good sort, and also extremely hardy. He's longer odds the rest. I've gone with one at a bit of a price in this race. Its name is Stage and Screen. Um, now, this horse won its debut race at Seymour. The horse that ran third called Mark Dell. You can tie the form in with some pretty good horses. Stage and Screen did this um, really well. Flew up the inside and won by two lengths in the end. From gate 12 can settle in an on-speed position um, off the inside, hopefully with a little bit of cover. Um, and in a, in a tough race, I think it's a progressive horse. In for second, more territories. Uh, John O'Shea and Tom Charlton send this horse south. Hugh Bowman takes the ride. From gate 11, it'll be off midfield. It's had some good form behind a node and just party. Benadjil, Benadjil, it's the horse that I've been on all preparation. It's at a big price now. I'll probably back it each way, even though it's not in my top two because I just like the horse. Blinkers first time, gate eight, maps for a good run. I like it. And Chewing Gum. Gate two will need a bit of luck, but it's run behind Kira Yanagi last start was full of merit. I like stage and screen and a bit of a prize for Tiakau. Race three is the group three rising fast stakes over the 1,200 metres. Schwartz is the favourite at $3.50 ahead of Ray Magnerio, who is at $4.750 for last year's winner. Spacewalk, $9.50 for Mahaba and longer odds the rest. We're going to take a look at the last start runs of both Spacewalk and Ray Magnerio at Caulfield in the Caulfield Sprint. Ray Magnerio, very unlucky not to win this race. Got chopped out for a run at the top part of the straight by Spacewalk um, and should have beat Estriella. But I'm with Spacewalk. Um, I thought it, it was first up on this occasion compared to Ray Magnerio second up. Needed the fitness benefit from this run. Also gets a three and a half kilo weight swing on Ray Magnerio off this performance. And it's proven at this track and trip as it won this edition of the race last year. So I think um, Spacewalk can turn the tables on Ray Magnerio and is a good chance. Drawn gate 14 down the straight is also ideal. 
I've got 0.75 units to win on Spacewalk, also 0.5 units to win on Star Patrol, who was also proven at the track and trip. Forget it's run first up. Um, it's a really good horse on its day. Blake Shin takes the ride. I can't believe it's double figures. It'll run a race. Um, as I remember, try to remember who I've got in for third. Johnny Rocker, also at a bit of a price for Huey Bowman. This horse, um, can't forget what it did in March of this year, running second behind Imperatriz. Um, it's racing well, and I think it can get into a placing on Saturday. And Charmstone will improve out of that first up run in the Northwood Plume and is proven down the straight. But I'm with Spacewalk and Star Patrol in race three, the Rising Fast. Race four is the group two, the Damien Oliver over the 1,400 metres. We've got two Kieran Mar gallopers that dominate the betting. Jimmy Star, the favourite, at $2.70. Another Will, two ninety second favourite. Third favourite is Mighty Ulysses at seven fifty. Double figures the rest. Now, we're going to take a look at the last start win of Jimmy Star in the weekend hustler at Caulfield. Um, this was a very good win considering how many winners were coming from the fence and up near the speed. Jimmy Stark came from about midfield, um, right down the outside and managed to win very impressively as well. It was second up on this occasion. Third up on Saturday should be ready to peak. Um, gate 10, I, I don't like. It'll have to get further back in the run than um, its uh, main danger in another will, but I just think the class of this horse mixed with the Fleming, long Flemington straight, it'll have an abundance of time to wind up, and I think it can pick up the stable mate, and it's the two progressive horses, but I've gone with Jimmy Starr ahead of another Will, who can't be um, dismissed. It's won seven from 11. Forget it's run last time. The Turak handicap was ridden upside down by leading. Um, doesn't have to lead on Saturday, and will be hard to beat. Mighty Ulysses was a good return winner at Caulfield, defeating Buffalo River in the Moonga Stakes. And then in there for fourth, Tamerlane, J-Mac rides from gate five. It looks to map well. But I like Jimmy Starr ahead of another Will in the Group 2, Damien Oliver. Race five is the Group 2, Wakeful Stakes for the three-year-old fillies over the 2,000 metres. Powers of Opal is the favourite at 250, coming down from Sydney, trained by John Sargent. 460 for Treasure the Moment, 650 for Jenny's Meadow, and longer odds the rest. Now, a lot of experts have taken on Treasure the Moment on Saturday, and I'm going to explain why I'm with it. So the algorithm that I use, it um, popped out with Treasure the Moment on top. So I went, all right, I'll investigate this a little bit further. And as soon as I looked at it, I thought, you're a query at 2,000 metres. But then I just thought a bit deeper and thought, why is Matt Lurie running this horse at 2,000 metres if it's a query at 2,000 metres? He doesn't have... Um, like, he's not like a Kieran Ma where he just has good three-year-old fillies galore in his stable. If he wants to go to a thousand guineas, he would have either run this horse in the Tab Vanity, which is race two, or even the Carbine Club, which is race one over 1,600 metres. But he must think this is an Oaks filly or something like that because he's gone straight to 2,000 metres with a horse that off its replays looks to ideally be suited at 1,600 metres. So that's sort of... Um, told me, well, maybe maybe Matt Laurie thinks this horse can run 2,000 metres. Significant jockey upgrade from Bo Mertens to Damien Lane. Nothing against Bo Mertens, but um, Damien Lane is a quality rider. Draws gate five for a good run, and we'll see how it goes, I guess. Powers of Opal, this horse could just bolt in because it it is very good. Won a super maiden last start at Hawkesbury by six lengths. Before that, ran fourth in the Group 1 Daly Flight Stakes. James McDonald rides when John Sargent sends one south. It's usually really good. So, um, yeah, it's in with a really good chance. Jenny's Meadow's been oh so consistent um, in some really good races, especially last start in the Ethereal behind Too Darn Discreet. And then in there for fourth, I've got our Paramore. Tiakao and Blake Shin combined. Decent maiden winner last start at Cranbourne. It's in with a decent chance. Treasure the moment for me, for Matt Laurie and Damien Lane in the wakeful. It's that time of the week. It's last man standing. Jordy is still on top and the only one currently in the green. I had a winning week last week, as did Cole. So we'll move on to what we're doing this week. Um, Jordy is having 100 the win on Schwartz um, down the Flemington Strait in race three. Sammy is going to have $100 the win on another Will in race four at Flemington. I went to Collie last week and won. My algorithm's best of the uh, of Saturday is Toowoomba, race six, number two, Big Sky Country. It's first up, it should lead, and it only has to run 870 metres to do so. So Big Sky Country, 100 the win for me. 
Braden is going for, um, what's its name? Jenny's Meadow, 50 the win, and 50 the win on Sons Dude. And then Sky High Horse Racing is going 100 the win on Aliana in the first. That's what we're doing for Last Man Standing this week. Now we get on to the fun stuff. Race six is the group one. Coolmore Stud Stakes over the 1,200 metres for the three-year-olds. Growing Empire is the favourite at $3.50, ahead of Traffic Warden, who's at $4.20. Switzerland is at $5.50. Lady of Camelot, the filly, is at $8.50. And the other filly in the race, Bellatrix Star, rounds out the single-figure horses at $9.50. Longer odds the rest. Now, we're going to take a look at the last start performance of Switzerland. I really like Switzerland in the Coolmore on Saturday. This was its win in the Roman console. Forget its run first up. It did an abundance of stuff wrong. Improved second up. and managed to beat a good horse called Coleman by two lengths. And you can tie... Um, the form in with Coleman through several different ho horses in this race. Now, the past five winners of this uh, of the Coolmore Stud Stakes, Osmosis, In Secret, um, Home Affairs, September Run, and Exceedance, all had the first run of their Coolmore Stud Stakes preparations in New South Wales, and they've come down to Melbourne for the Coolmore. Um, Switzerland is third up, peaking, and comes down to Melbourne for the Coolmore. I like that setup, and I've got it on top. Ahead of Traffic Warden, who does the same thing. It's had a little setback with not running in the Everest, which is the only reason I've got Switzerland ahead of it. And also, I think Switzerland's drawn better in Gate 8 compared to Traffic Warden Gate 3 down the straight. In for third, I've got Bellatrix Star. This horse was originally my on-top selection. Um, I still like it. It's won three in a row. It's been beating up on the fillies and it got in well in the weights against the older horses when it won last start at Caulfield. But still, it's very good. Blake Shin rides from gate 11. That's a good gate down the straight. I wouldn't be surprised if it won. Growing Empire, um, the favorite, I was happy to take it on. I'm just a bit worried. It's fifth up compared to some of the other key chances that are third up and peaking. Growing Empire's fifth up. It's been up to Sydney. It's been back down from Sydney. It's done a fair bit of travelling and it's um, deep into its preparation. That's why I was just sort of questioning it, questioning it because young horses, they're very fragile. They need to be well looked after. And I just think Switzerland um, and Traffic Warden are peaking third up and they've only travelled into state once. So that's why I was with Switzerland and Traffic Warden ahead of Bellatrix Star and Growing Empire in the Coolmore Stud Stakes. Race 7 is the Group 1 Victoria Derby over the 2,500 metres. Also for the three-year-olds, El Costello is the favourite at $3.70 ahead of Red Aces at six fifty. King of Thunder is at $7 and then double figures the rest. We're going to take a look at the last start win of El Costello in the Spring Champion Stakes. Just the Saturday gone. Um, at Ramwick, uh, the very good win. This horse is four from four, this preparation. It's absolutely firing on all cylinders. Um, I originally had King of Thunder on top when I did the form yesterday, but the only thing that put me off about El Castello was gate 18. I think it's the best horse in the race and definitely the best chance, but I was put off by the gate 18. I've just started um, liking it for some reason this morning. I thought... If it gets a good map, if it somehow gets in with cover and a good run, it's it's just going to win, isn't it? That's what I thought to myself. Um, so, if well, that's obviously the query, what, what run in transit it's going to get. But if it gets, um, you know, somewhere with cover on speed, it, it should be too good in my opinion. I just think that spring champion form dominates the, um, the likes of the Vars and the, um, the Caulfield Classics. So... I like El Costello ahead of King of Thunder, who I already said was my on-top selection yesterday. James McDonald rides um, another 50 metres, and it would have won that race last week, beating Red Aces, who is my third selection um, from gate four, should be right on speed and giving it all. And Keeneland was good through the line last start behind King of Wall Street. Hugh Bowman takes the ride. El Costello for me in the derby. Race 8 is the Group 1 Empire Rose Stakes for the Phillies and Mares over the 1,600 metres. A Tissue is the favourite at $4.50, ahead of Amelia's Jewel at $5. Then you've got out to $6.50 for plenty of ammo off the week back up. $7 for Orchestral and longer odds the rest. We're going to take a look at the last start run of a Tissue in the Caulfield Stakes behind Deny Knowledge and Mr. Brightside. Deny Knowledge stole it, was off and gone with it. Mr. Brightside ever so consistent. A tissue was held up at the top part of the straight and arguably could have finished in front of Mr. Brightside. 
a tissue ran in this um, Empire Rose last year, where it got narrowly beaten by a horse called Pride of Jenny. There's no Pride of Jennies in this race, so I don't see why it can't go one better. Draws Gate 9 is clearly the best horse in the race of form. James McDonald takes the ride, um, and I think it's a really good chance of winning the Empire Rose on Saturday. In for second, I have got plenty of ammo off the week back up. Um, I like. It's third up now, ready to peak. Maps for a soft run for Geordie Childs from gate three. Very progressive. I like plenty of ammo. In there for third, I've got Al Safina. This horse was originally my on-top selection. I've had a few selection changes since I first did the form, but Blake Shin t uh, goes back on this horse where he won it in on it impressively um, in the stock stakes two runs ago. Uh, it's in with a good chance. And then in there for fourth, I've got Orchestral, was good through the line in the Turak Handicap and will be fitter for that run. But I like it, Tissue, to take out the Group 1 Empire Rose Stakes. Race 9 is the Group 3 Furphy Sprint for the Mares over the 1100 metres. Sons Doot is the favourite at $5.50 ahead of Pondalawi at $6. The two Kieran Mark Gallopers, a little deep, and Ferrari are at $7. They're equal third favourites. Longer odds to the rest. We're going to take a look at the last start run of Sons Doot in the Group 2 Caulfield Sprint. We've already taken a look at this replay today for Spacewalk and Ray Magnerio. Sons Doot, I'm with it on Saturday. I think back on a firmer surface, we'll see the best of this horse. Drops back from a Group 2 race against the boys to a Group 3 race against uh, its own sex in the mares. It's proven down the straight. Draws gate 9, which is ideal. James McDonald on is ideal. Uh, it's a ripper of a chance. It's probably going to be my best of the day on Saturday. I like it. Ahead of Wanda Rocks, they wouldn't be sending this horse all the way down south for nothing. Looks a very good horse. Won its last race very well. Um, I was on it that day as well. So um, it's one of my favourites from Queensland. Um, I've got it in there for second. In for third, I've got a little deep. Don't like the... Sorry, I've got... Ferrari in there for third. Um, I like the gate, gate 14, and it looks very progressive and a little deep. Uh, just didn't like gate three late in the day down the straight, but Jamie Carr rides and it's in good form. I'm with Sons to take out the last on Derby Day. Now it's time for the quaddy. I thought for sure we were going to get it last week when it got to the last race, but I didn't have Lady Jones. We'll move on to what we're doing this week, though. Race 6, the Coolmore Stud. 1, Growing Empire. 2, Coleman. 3, Traffic Warden. 5, Switzerland. 8, Gatsby's. And 14, Bellatrix Star. The Victoria Derby. 1, El Costello. 2, Red Aces. 3, Keeneland. 7, Politely Done. 8, King of Thunder. And 13, Scary. In the Empire, Rose, one, a tissue, two, Amelia's Jewel, three, Orchestral, seven, El Safina, and 13, plenty of ammo. And then to finish off in the Furphy Sprint, going a little bit skinnier with just the four horses, which is my top four, Sons Dude, a little deep, um, Wanda Rocks, and Ferrari. That's what I'm doing for the Quaddy this week. Thank you, everyone, for watching my preview of Derby Day. In my opinion, the toughest day on the calendar year to tip winners. It's a 4.25 unit spend this week, so if one of the horses as I have units on wins, I make a profit. So I'll be pretty happy with that. Stay tuned. Saturday night, I'm going to do a Melbourne Cup live reaction to the barrier draw and also the Melbourne Cup tips um, for that specific race. The Melbourne Cup will be up on late Saturday night when after I do the barrier draw. So that'll be lots of fun. Make sure you stick around for that. Until then, bye for now.